Hey, so I was out in the barn this morning and I realized after I uploaded uh, the tutorial part two about knitting the foot of your felted clog, um, there's a couple things I wanted to add to that. And rather than just redo the whole entire thing, I'm just going to kind of make a part two and a half, part 2.5, the addendum, if you will. Okay, so I just had some other tips I wanted to share with you about what happens when um, you're decreasing your stitches along the foot and you're going to end up with too many stitches, or sorry, too few stitches for the size of cable needle that you have. And then you'll end up kind of stretching them around and that doesn't work very well. So I want to show you what you can do about that. Um, there's just a couple other little things I'd, I'd watch for as you go through that section of the pattern. So, okay. Now it's getting to the point where I'd really like to change my needles out. Um, I'm getting kind of too few stitches for this size of cable needle and I don't want my work to be stretched out. Um, so you have a couple of choices here. You can either switch to double pointed needles, which is fine and certainly will work. Um, you can switch to a much smaller circular needle that has a smaller cable or a shorter distance, but the cable's a shorter distance here between between the bottoms of your needles, so it'll pull everything in. Or you can use a much longer cable needle and implement the magic loop method, which is what I'm gonna choose to do here. Um, I'm going to start, when, when we do the magic loop, it ends up where you have a very long cable needle and you kind of do a figure eight like this, and then you have your excess in loops at the ends. And that sounds funny, but um, you can go, uh, search, do a magic loop method search on YouTube or you can watch a previous video that I did that kind of explains that and shows that when we did our, our hat knit along. Um, I'll link, put a link to that in the little eye that's in the upper right hand corner of the screen here. But needless to say, I, I, want, to, I want to switch out to a longer needle and I'm gonna do that when I get to the top of the foot, kind of in the halfway point of my work. And then also I'll show you, we'll have another um, loopy bit, cable loop at the back where the heel seam is going to be. Um, but right now I've just finished row 26 and I'm starting row 27, which is a knit row, not one with the increases because I don't want to have to mitigate that while I'm doing a, a transfer of my stitches to a new needle. So I'm just gonna slip and I'm gonna knit about halfway across and then I'll show you what we're gonna do from there to transfer to a, a longer cable needle. Now I know when I'm getting to my center point because if you look at your work here, if you look back previous, you can see here where we've done those decreases, like here's a knit two together and here's the slip slip knit from before. And the stitch that's in the center is, is the center line. Okay, that's the center of the top of the foot. So you can see that here too, there's my knit two together from before, my knit stitch and then my slip slip knit. So I'm gonna choose to switch out my needles just after my center point, okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and push this one through so I can get my stitches down here and I don't worry about them falling off. Next, I'm gonna take my new cable needle. I have another one. It is a much longer cable and it has, it's, but it is the same diameter, a, a US size 13. So I'm really, I'm just gonna start knitting these stitches off onto my new needle, okay? So I'm, that's all I'm gonna do right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and complete my row as written. Okay, this is row 27. When I get however many I'm supposed to do and I get to the gap, I'm gonna do the same thing as always where I'm gonna slip slip knit this together to close our gap, just like the pattern says, and I'm gonna knit one. Now normally I would turn and, and uh, slip one and purl my way back across, but I'm really wanting to transfer all these to the other side, the other silver needle. So in order to do that, this is gonna be a little awkward and, and uh, take some fiddling to get this accomplished, um, but it's really, not, it's really not too bad. So what I wanna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and this is where I've left off. You can always tell that. This is where I'm gonna begin my next purl row. So we're just gonna hit the pause button for a second on the pattern. 
um, mark that spot. You just finished row 27 or whatever row you choose to do this. But right now I'm not going to knit anything or purl anything. I'm just slipping everything off onto my new needle. I'm slipping as if to purl so that I'm careful not to twist any stitches. Okay, so you're just going to do that all the way until you get to the... There's one I had twisted. We want to do that until we get to the heel join. Okay. All right. Now you can see where the heel is, where I joined in the round. Now that's great. What I need to do now though is push everything down. And I want to get this free so that I can pull through the extra. Okay. I'm going to pull through the extra. This is where I'm going to create one of my magic loops. Okay. So I'm going to loop this, loop this around and then I'll carry on. So can you see that I've got this big loop here? Okay. And now I'm going to continue slipping, slipping them off the bamboo needle. All right. And the reason we're doing this is because I'm creating this great big loop. It's not going to pull my stitches or distort anything because I've got, they can come together here where the cable is and then I've got this loop here, okay? I'll show you what that looks like on the other side. Right now I'm just transferring everything off onto this needle so that I can get the uh, bamboo needle out of there. So right now I'm having to kind of work, work these on and, and push them up on there just so I can continue slipping them off onto the silver metal needle, okay? All right, when we get back to the beginning, when we, well, not the beginning, but we get back to where we started our needle transfer, things are a little awkward, but we got the bamboo one out of there. Okay, so set that aside. And now you can see what this all looks like. Let me lay it out and make it straighter for you to see, okay? We have both of the needles coming out the top where we began the transfer. And then here in the back, we are going to make, we're gonna pull some excess through to be able to create our loop, okay? Like that, you're gonna do that. And it will not naturally try to twist, and that's fine because it's keeping these stitches close together and things won't get stretched out. So that's totally fine. So let that be, and we're gonna turn our work around Okay, and push your left needle back in, push your right needle back in, because we're gonna need to continue our knitting. Now, we don't wanna push the right needle back in too much. I misspoke there. Our Where we left off knitting was back here. That's where we need to slip and go back and purl, but we need to be able to get our needle points to that section. Again, this is the center of the top, which is great. I'm going to pull a little bit out, but I don't want to pull so much through that I'm going to lose this loop on my back half. So I'm just going to pull a little bit out and then I'm going to curl my needle around, being careful to maintain that loop. And then I'm just going to go ahead and transfer the rest over here on the right to get back to where we left off with our work. Okay. Now you still have your needle and your loopy cable loop in the back here on your heel seam. And then you have a cable loop here in the front, on the front center. So this is why it's called kind of a magic loop or figure eight. Let me zoom out a little so you can see that better, okay? So we have a loop here on this side and a loop here on this side. And as we work around, we just keep adjusting those loops, but that allows you to just use one longer cable needle to, as your work gets shorter, or a fewer stitches as we continue doing those closing the gap decreases and also the decreases on the top of the foot. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you. Now I'm back where, where, we, where we ended up with our knitting row 27. So now I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit and give myself some room here, okay? And then I still have my loop over here, okay? So now I'm gonna turn my work and I'm just going to continue with what I was doing where I'm going to slip and purl my way back, okay? So, you know, even a 60-inch cable would give you a little more room here. Um, I think this one's 40-inch. But hopefully you can see how you have your cable loop on this side, your cable loop on this side, your cable loop on this side. So it does create kind of a figure-eight situation. All right, well, I'm going to slip one 
and I'm going to purl my way back across for row 28 and I will show you what I do when I get to the place in the center where that first cable loop arrives. All right, I'm getting a lot of stitches built up on my right needle, so that's okay. Now I've gotten here. So what I'm gonna do is simply pull this and make this loop bigger so that I draw up the left one. I'm gonna pull the right one loose. And I know this seems super fiddly and a big pain to do each time you get to the halfway point in your round, but I promise it will get easier and less fiddly. Now I'm just pulling that through and curling that around to, to make that loop again. And I'm purling, so I need to be mindful of which way I'm starting starting back here. Okay, you'll learn to do this when you make socks if you use a longer circular needle when you make socks as well. So now I'm just going to continue purling back. Whoops. Okay, don't do that. When that happens, you just got to be careful to pick everything back up. It does happen. It happens. Happens to all of us occasionally. All right, so I've fixed my slip up there. That's one reason I, I like bamboo needles better than metal needles, but you do what's best for you. Okay, so I have my loop here at the top and I still have my loop here at the back at the heel. Okay, and you can see where my gap is, where I'm going to be purling two together to complete row 28. Okay. Now the other thing I will tell you is after 30 some odd pairs of these, I did get to the point where I no longer knit these in the round. Maybe I shouldn't tell you that because um, I didn't I didn't want to say that right now because you, many of you are beginners and you need to follow the pattern as written. But as you gain more experience, you'll figure out what works for you. And honestly, I don't knit these in the round anymore. I knit them flat back and forth and then I sew up the seam at the end. But it did take me, it took me quite some time to figure out that that would be easier for me. It is not easier for some people, so. Okay, now I've purled two together, purled one, and now I'm turning my work. Okay, so you'll get that figured out. Let me know if you have any questions. You can um, look for other videos on Magic Loop if that's confusing. And just carry on through the pattern, uh, being mindful to watch your instructions and um, be careful when you get down to, oh, row 34, 35, maybe row 32 if you're knitting the smaller size. After you do your decrease to close the gap, you'll want to be mindful of how many stitches you knit after that. So, okay, knit on.